Hi, my name is Flavia Pirchi. I am from Brazil and I'm telling you straight from my own studio in the countryside of Sao Paulo, in the city of Vinhedo. And I'm gonna show you this graffito process. So we are gonna use this piece, which I thrown, and we we need that this piece it's in the leather soft leather heart and i'm gonna use a pencil with very soft bristles so when we pass the ingobi that we can't see the marks of the brush brush in the piece okay so my ingobi i prepare by my own i use black stain and cobalt oxide and i'm gonna sh give you the recept written on the video but first i'd like to show you how i do the draw i always use a wooden point too because I think that the steel or metal point tools, they make very aggressive marks on the piece. And if I dry, draw it wrong or if I want to change the draw, so it w I won't be able to erase the mark. So I would use, I think you can see from here, I, I use this wood piece and I then draw the mainly lines for my piece where I will paint and just afterwards I will do this graffito. So here is my black ingobi. The ingobi I after I mix the clay and the stain or oxide I pass through a hundred mesh sieve so it's very smooth to work with him it and after the work is done and the piece is fired I won't see the marks of my brush each coat has to be thin and I wait a while till the ingob is not shining anymore when it's totally matte so I know it's dry enough to receive the second coat. Overall I do three coats of each color I use. I'm gonna use now the blue in Gobi and I'll do a graffito with two different colors and two different marks so you can see all the possibilities you can explore on this technique as you can realize the coats are very thin so you can nearly see through the coat the body of the piece, the clay down there. So I let it dry and just then I put the second coat. The black one is already totally dry, so I will do the second one. The reason I don't like to use a very thick coat, it's because the surface it's not smooth and nice enough. The ingobi has a little bit thickness and if you put a very thick coat, you can see the pieces and the parts which the ingob accumulated and then you have some, you have some small parts which you can see more ingovi accumulated, which I don't think it's very nice. And now I'm putting the blue one again. 
and after the third coat you see that the cover will be perfect without excess of material so that's my second coat and I'll give you the receipt now, right now of both engulfs and after that we come back and take the and make the third coat okay doing uh, the third and last coat which will be totally covered with the color and I will have a very nice surface the black and the blue And as you put the first, the second and the third coat, you realize that the first one is very, very fast dry, but the second not so fast and the third one will take longer because this part of the piece has already been covered with this humidity of the other coats. So, the importance of that the piece is leather hard is now. When we use the tools to make this graffito, you scratch the piece. And if the piece is too dry, you see that the, the draw is not sharp enough to be beautiful. And then it seems to be that you did the scratch and you didn't clean it or you were in a rush and that's not really beautiful. So, if the piece is a little bit humid with mist, you see that you can scratch much smoother and the, the sharpness of your draw is much beautiful and the result is much nicer. So now I have here the piece is dry, uh, I mean the ingle is dry and then I start drawing and making this graffito and you have to really stretch your tool and you have uh, you need a very firm hands that you don't shake because once you make a mark you can be erased so the first thing I will do is a very nice and long line which will be the mainly part of my draw and here I hope you can see here it is and then I start making the another lines which will be the second main lines and what I also like to say that the draws I do, uh, they are the result of a research I made in the in, uh, Indian graphics we have in my country because I have so Indian ancestors and I'd like to make like a homage for them and to explore these um, roots of my family. So now I start making the draw and I will try to film better so you can see the movement of my hands in the piece.
So, as you could see, I never put my hands, I never touch these parts here because you must remember that the piece has a lot of moisture and the ingobi is also humid so if I put my hands it will be sticky to the piece and instead of cleaning you will be making a mess so I use a teeth brush to clean and to see what I'm drawing because I need a clean area, clean space to see if it's good or if I want to do something more. The tools I use to scratch has a lot of forms. So I would show you here. This is which I did. I bought them and then with a plier I make this point by myself. You can see and there's another one but there are thousands on, of tools on the market so you can use the point is that you have to try what you like most and what kind of marks you want to let it so each one has a different uh, mark i will show you so these tools are uh, very different and for sure the marks they will let it on the piece will be different so I will use this another piece just to show you how different a point can let it and this one and this one you see that surface is not very sharp like this but you have on the sides a little bit of a sharpness maybe you want this result or this one and this and this and this And also this, if you want that the mark is a little bit of the side, so you can see here is deeper than this side. And then when you glaze over the graffito, you have a difference, uh, different results and visual results because here in the side you have a little bit one millimeter of, of glaze deeper, deeper than this one so each tool has a different mark leaves a different mark so it's up to you to use and try all of them and see what you like most okay so coming back to our piece I will use these tools to make the next step and it's good for you to know that if something happened and you couldn't do your graffito at the time you put the ingobi on you can use a spray which is not ideal but it can be used to make to bring back a little bit humidity to the surface so you can scratch without having bad results. It depends on the tool you use, you have sharp or unsharp marks. So until now I used this kind of and now I'm gonna use like a needle or a very 
small. So I will do a different kind of sgraffito, which is looks like really I'm scratching the piece. Let's have a look. Once you finish the draw you want to and you are satisfied with the result, you should let the piece dry to the bone state. And just then we do the final work, cleaning and letting it totally beautiful and sharp and we bring it in to the kiln to fire. I can't tell you how long does it take exactly due to the weather conditions of the area where you are. We have now winter in Brazil with nice 29 degrees but very low humidity, just 25%. So I guess that with this hot dry weather it won't take long, this piece will be dry enough and then we can keep on working on the piece. Hi, a couple of hours later, I have the piece completely dry. More important than to know how long did it take to me, it's uh, important for you to learn how to read the clay, how to know in which state is your piece, because each state of humidity enables you to do a different step from this process. So as you can see the piece is completely dry uh, in the bone state and you can realize that the color is even lighter and the first thing we do is with the teeth brush we can very soft remove all the dirty it is uh, in, in your piece. In this place you can see. So with a steel wool we will um, polish very very carefully with light pressure and with this we will remove all the edges in the piece so it's really light this movement you just have a very fine dust here it's not a lot otherwise you can scratch the ingobi and the color is gone here you can see it's a very very fine dust And at this moment, I take all these marks out here on the side. You can see that it's a little bit darker, so I will remove this mark because when I was doing this graffito, I scratched too much. And each time I have too much dust, I put it away, I throw it. And then I have a very nice surface without sharp edges. So now I have to brush really careful that all the dust will be removed. After uh, removing all the dust, I use this dotting tool to clean the low relief and this is a very patient and precise work because we really don't want that this 
dusty off clay is sticky on your piece and after fired your piece looks dirty so you can see where the low relief is bigger or larger you have more dusty and you can take everything off you will notice that when you are doing that you can feel that when the piece is very dry if you scratch it will be the edges won't be sharp and it seems like you did it in a hurry or the visual result won't be such nice work what is also important that you keep in mind is that the piece you are work, working on is um, have, hasn't been fired yet it isn't a bisque so you have to handle it very carefully otherwise you break and you damage your piece because it's totally dry and very very fragile I always uh, say to my students <clears throat> that when you are doing this part of the work you must remember uh, how to bet a baby have you ever bet a baby before so if you do did you know what I'm talking about the first time you were totally scared about dealing with this very fragile body in your hands but with the time you will be used to that but we oh. always be careful so uh, with a polished stone or very simple plastic you can polish your piece if you prefer a stone try to find one that the shape fits to your piece or if you prefer to use the plastic be sure it's a very very thin one so you will not hard polishing but very soft polishing just to be smooth to be used so the edges are very sharp and with this kind of movement you put all the sharpness down to the piece and then you can use as a tableware pottery so while you do that you don't have to be glossy just to put down all the edges I personally prefer stone instead of the plastic but it's up to you both of them work it property once your work is done you can fire it and this piece is ready to go to the kiln if you use to fire twice you bring to the kiln fire your bisque and then use the glaze in my case I always fire my pieces my production single fire so I will put the glaze on it and I'll use a transparent one and then in a couple of days I'll be back and show you when it's done okay see you hi I'm back and um, I took the piece out from the kiln I fired to cone in cone 7 for 10 hours and I am in a, another place of my studio because I think the light here is better so you can see uh, properly the result so let's see the piece dun, 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 dun. here it is so here you can see I took out from the kiln and I glazed with different glazes over the ingot so here I have matte glaze 
here and here and over the blue I put some clear but shining glaze. I try to go a little bit closer so you can see property that my matte glaze is a very hard one and the draw keeps untouchable and the angle is a very hard material so it doesn't move in the meaning that the color stays exactly as I brushed it and I made this graffito which is very precise and sharp line and here over the blue I put a clear shining glaze and I use a flux over it and this glaze changes and starts a reaction with the components of the blue engulp that makes some parts of the engulp as you can see here it makes it the, that the color fade away and brings small reactions start small reactions of the colors so you don't have a completely plain color as I have here at the black one. If I covered the black and gold with such brighting, shining, clear glaze, the same would happen here because of the materials I put inside the recipe of my engulf. If it would be just clay and and color, doesn't matter stain or oxide, would be totally flat color. But but as I mix it, oxide and dolomite and soda ash, the clear glaze starts this uh, this reaction and and then I have this result which you can see it's not just a normal angle but a reaction one almost like a glaze so I hope you like this graffito and the following scenes I will put some other pieces of mine so you can get inspired and start doing this marvelous and very pleasant work in ceramic. Bye-bye!